So the numbers are in for July home appreciation. You are not going to believe what we did. Hey, I'm Sandy Warner with Warner Realty Group. And today we're going to talk about the July 2020, 2021 year over year appreciation. What does that mean? What we're talking about is how much did home prices appreciate or home values? That's even more important. Home values appreciate between July of 2020 and July of 2021. Take a look at this. These numbers just came out. These numbers are tracked by various uh, financial firms and real estate analysts and lots of people watch this number because it's an economic indicator. So if you look at the Fair Housing Finance Agency, the FHFA, their report shows that in one year, in July of 2020 to July of 2021, they are showing a 19.2% increase. CoreLogic shows 18%. S&P Case-Shiller shows 19.7%. If you average those together, it's 18.9%. That is a huge increase. Basically, that saying is that nationally, everyone who bought a home in the United States in July of 2020 has about a 19% increase. Here, you can see it on a map. For my friends out in Idaho, check it out. You were at 37%. Now, my stepmom and my dad are from Idaho, and they live in Idaho a lot. And, and what happened out there was a lot of people from California went out because there's so much land in Idaho, and they started buying up all the land. On the next screen, this is my little corner of the world. This is Rhode Island, Connecticut, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, uh, Vermont. Rhode Island saw a 23.7% increase in value. Now, a lot of that we did see here in Newport. We saw it in areas like Narragansett, Charlestown, uh, a lot of areas where Airbnb is pop, uh, popular. We did see a lot of money come out of uh, the cities, going in and buying investment properties. Great for those people who bought those properties. It does come with a host of other problems, but still very good news. Massachusetts, you went up 18.5%. Connecticut, 20%. What's coming up next? Ivy Zellman is, a, is an analyst, and she's projecting that we're going to see a 10% decrease in the number of closings over the second half of 2021. We're not quite seeing that yet. We're seeing a steady number of, to closing, of closings, but she's also saying that we're gonna see a deceleration in the increase of home values. Now remember, a deceleration does not equal depreciation. The, the best way to describe it is if you're doing, you're banging down 95 at 80 miles an hour and you see a, a, a police officer way down there, you'll go from 80 miles an hour and you'll bring it back to 65. 65 is really fast. Uh, when I was growing up, everything was 50 miles an hour. So 65, you're still flying down the highway. But because you were doing 80, now that you're at 65, it feels like you're going really, really slow. You're not. You're still moving very quickly down the highway. That's what we're talking about when we talk about deceleration in home value appreciation. So instead of increasing at 18%, 19%, 23% like it did in Rhode Island, it might drop down to 10%, 12%. Uh, still wonderful. Still more than you're going to get by having your cash in the bank, right? It's still one of the best investments out there. So even though you may not see those those huge 20% uh, uh, appreciations that you, you would have had you bought last July, you're still going to have good appreciation. Here's what we're expecting to see in appreciation over the next five years, four years, really. The estimates are these are coming from a, a company called Pulsonomics, and they take surveys and they try to determine what we're going to see in home value appreciation. For 2021, the estimate is that it'll be 11.74% for the whole year. So... In this particular number, the way they're looking at it is say you bought in Jan on January 1st of 2021, by the end of uh, 2021 in December, you should see an 11% increase. In 2022, instead of 11%, we have a 5% increase, still 5% increase. So if you buy in 2022 at the beginning, you'll have earned 5% on your money. 
2023, dropping to 3.9. In 2024, dropping to 3.6. In 2025, 3.5. What are the mortgage rates doing? We did see everything nudge up uh, just over 3%, right? Today, when I was looking, I did a little search. Uh, it was averaging 3.1%. What are we expecting things to do in the future and why does it matter? Well, mortgage rates, if you can borrow at, you know, for a while ago, uh, a month ago, it was 2.6% and now it's just over three. The more it costs you to borrow the money to buy your house, the more your monthly payment is. The more your monthly payment is, you know, your your uh, affordability drops down just a touch. So we have four projections that we're looking at. We're looking at what Freddie Mac, what Fannie Mae, um, Mortgage Bank of, of America, and the National Association of Realtors. They're all making these projections. So Q4, which is uh, October, November, December of 2021, Freddie Mac says we're going to go as high as 3.4. Fannie Mae says, no, we're going to go down to 2.9. Mortgage Bank of America says 3.1 and NAR says 3.3. That's about 3.18. So not a big increase projected for the last quarter of 2021, which means if you're still out there trying to buy, you can still afford. It's still a very affordable rate um, for it. So yes, home prices are going up, but mortgage rates are staying down, which means that the dollar it costs you to buy that money stays very low. First quarter of 2022, it's estimated we're going to go to about 3.3, so really negligible. Second quarter of 2022 is 3.45. And third quarter of 2022, they're saying maybe about 3.5. So you can see these are, these are infinitesimal movements in the mortgage rates. When the economy starts improving, we see this slightly nudging up. We are seeing relatively low unemployment rate. It was down around 4.6 for, I want to say, October. I, I was looking it up on the uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics this morning. But even though we're seeing low unemployment rate, we're still seeing significant supply chain issues. So the Federal Bank, when they start looking at how much are we going to support these capital markets, We've got low unemployment, but we've got other problems. So they're not likely to stop buying these mortgage-backed securities in large numbers, which should keep these rates fairly low. Now, uh, this is this picture is where the mortgage rates have gone since January of 2020. They were at 3.7 because we were kind of rolling along there at 3.7. And then you see this, it just falls off the cliff. Um, this uh, slide that's up here right now is January 2020 through today. So you can see around March when COVID just shut the country down, mortgage rates just just fell. Uh, and the reason for that is the federal government tries to support the mortgage rates to keep the housing market going. They went down, 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 down. Now we're starting to see them edge up, but still wildly below where we were in January of 2020. Why is that important? Because, because you start seeing news uh, talking about it and the media talking about it and everybody on YouTube who's trying to give you some content and they're like, oh no, mortgage rates are going up. Well, yeah, but one tenth of a percent and still way below where we were last January. Uh, and if you look at the historical mortgage rates by decade, we are still in such a sweet spot. Uh, in the 1970s, when probably your parents were buying homes, it was 8.8%. And it's dropped steadily. In 20, Even in 2010s, it was 4.09. And now we're down, we were down in the 2.7s, so and now we're about 3.1. So why do we talk about this? If you're a seller, we are starting to see a small deceleration in the increase of your home value in the appreciation of your home. If you have not refinanced and you're still up in this 4% rate, now's the time. I will happily introduce you to any number of mortgage brokers who can drop you. If you're up around 4%, that's a percentage point. That's a lot of money a month and that will put you in a great position. For any of you who are struggling with this COVID market and maybe you're in trouble with your house, don't give up. You have equity. The odds of you not having equity are so small. Forbearance should uh, forbearance is out there, but but anybody, I'm still getting calls with people who are in trouble and saying that they might lose their house. This should not be happening. If we can help you with that, give us a call. The good news is acceleration is, or sorry, home prices continue 
to improve in value, which means all of you have nice little savings accounts. Uh, for my buyers out there who are worried that they're going to buy and the market's going to crash, no indication of that. There is nothing coming on the market. This idea of, I hope we talked about that and we've got other videos. We're not going to see a bunch of houses come on the market and tank your values, regardless of what anyone says. I'm Sandy Warner. I'm with Warner Realty Group. We take the complex and make it simple.